Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, there is a tsunami of FUD stories coming our way and we need to make sure that we're prepared so we need to dig deep. So first up, investing legend Mark Mobius says Bitcoin is going to break lower and he uses the same arguments and he talks about how he can wear gold, but he can't wear Bitcoin, which is kind of odd because there's a lot of things out there that are valuable like data, which he can't wear either. On top of that, we'll take a look at Elizabeth Warren talks about growing threats in the crypto market. And this was a hearing which was held today. And we're going to take a look at both sides of the story into what she is talking about. Also, let's take a look at the Amazon story where they deny Bitcoin acceptance rumors, even though they still have a nice job posting for digital currency and blockchain product lead. And to round it all out, uh, Bobby Lee states that China's crackdown signals an oncoming crypto ban. And just as a reminder, it gets banned all the time. So who cares? Anyhow, we'll take a look at those four FUD stories on top of the fact that the digital asset news Theta drop is live. You get a lot of cool stuff as far as like the NFTs and a lot of things as far as like once you uh, are in the auction and actually win brand shout outs, live Zoom sessions, private crypto portfolio. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to Ivory uh, Symbiotic Creatives who helped us create uh, the actual NFT uh, that you can uh, purchase today for only 24 hours. And uh, we'll take a look at what's going on with that. But first, let's take a look what's going on into the market. So today we're down. We're down uh, almost 5%, 4.5% or so. And that's mostly because, eh, you know, the Amazon story. But a healthy pullback is fine because, look, we were up by 15% over the weekend. And that is not too shabby. I will take those uh, positive numbers. So Bitcoin, just around 38000 Ethereum, Doing great, $2,200, I'm glad. Tether's Tether, I really don't care. Binance Coin, Cardano, XRP, I mean, they're all down a little bit, but uh, over the last hour, up a little. So we'll see how it goes. Again, sideways action, I'm okay with that. I get to accumulate and I'm happy. So let's jump in and take a look at what is going on with this first FUD story. And before I get into it, let me just tell you this. Uh, all FUD stories, all negative stories, you have to understand, uh, there's a reason why People like to talk about negativity because it sells. And there's something in our brains, the fight or flight, something about uh, the negativity that draws us to it. So when you see a lot of these stories, just be like, oh, it's just another negative story. It's the same thing as like in, in the news articles or newspapers or online. You're going to see a lot of negativity because that's what gets the clicks and the eyeballs. And that's just how it works out. Now, on this show, the only reason I like to talk about it is to dispel it because if I don't talk about it now, I get to talk about it to each individual person in the comment section over and over and over and over again. So let's just dispel it now and get it out there. So this is what is going on the very first part. Investing legend Mark Mobius. No idea who this guy is. Apparently he's a legend. Good for him. What's going on here? Well, he state, stated to Bloomberg, I don't see how enthusiasm about cryptocurrencies is going to grow in this environment. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Mobius expects governments to crack down more and more on the industry. Sure. All right. And then he states uh, he believes that faith in Bitcoin will soon start breaking down because unlike gold, it has no tangible qualities. I can wear a gold watch, but I can't wear Bitcoin. And so for those of you who are in the traditional finance sector, and maybe you know Mr. Mobius, you might hear this on your, you know, dealings in the day-to-days and operation, whatever else. But just remember, uh, Warren Buffett passed on Google because he didn't understand it. And he passed on a lot of tech things. And he's one of the greatest investors probably of all time, uh, arguably, right? Mobius, I'm sure he's a pretty great investor about whatever he knew about. But if he doesn't know about this, just stay in your lane. And I'm not saying that nobody has the right to have an opinion. I'm just saying that just because you can't wear something, touch it, feel it, smell it, all that stuff, taste it, doesn't mean it doesn't have value. So the same type of thing as far as data goes. Data analytics companies are huge and data is the new gold. So if we take a look at just that example, sure. And then of course we can talk about the other things about Bitcoin. It's very hard to take the value of gold and move it across the world in less than 30 minutes for next to nothing. Try moving Mobius's billion dollars, whatever he's got, uh, around the world in less than 30 minutes. Gonna cost you an army, gonna cost you a lot of money, but you can do it with Bitcoin pretty darn easy. And uh, it's not just for the rich, it's also for the poor downtrodden and everybody else as we see in El Salvador. So look, let me know what you think about that in the comments section, but we're just getting started. So the next one, Elizabeth Warren. 
I know some people hate her and some people love her. Do not give me a thumbs down because you don't like Elizabeth Warren. Give me a thumbs down because this video sucks and you can't stand it. Do not give me a thumbs down because you're like, oh, Elizabeth Warren, blah, blah, blah. It's not the point. It's not the point. It's what we're talking about here. So here's what we got. Elizabeth Warren says there's growing threats in the crypto market. I have to agree with her. <laughs> there are growing threats. There's a lot of different rug pulls and different things that are going on out there. And some people will say, well, you know, it, it's all about, you know, you and your personal responsibility and everything else. And yes, I get that. But I will, I have said this once, said it, said it a thousand times, a little regulation goes a long way, worked out pretty well for the internet. It was pretty much a little regulation, then hands off and things flourished. So I'm hoping the same thing happens here. It can be done. Government did do it back in the day. So what's going on here? Well, Warren states FSOC must act quickly to use its statutory authority to address cryptocurrencies risks and regulate the market to ensure the safety and stability of consumers and our financial system. As the demand for cryptocurrencies continues to grow and these assets become more embedded in our financial system, consumers, the environment, and our financial systems are under growing threats. And I have, to, I mean, look, true. The weird thing though, is that she talks about, we need regulation, we need regulation, but she never really puts out a plan about what it is. I've heard this from Elizabeth Warren for quite some time. I know that she's regulated the banks in, in the past. She's actually very uh, against the banks, which is kind of weird in the next part, what we talk about. But uh, I want to hear exactly what her plan is and the people that are in this committee, because that's the whole point of the committee, just to get things talking, just to get things moving. But just because one person wants it in the committee doesn't mean everybody wants it. That's the whole point of a democracy. So to finish up, Warren cited five risks posed by an under-regulated crypto market. One, exposure to hedge funds and other investment vehicles that lack transparency. All right, well, sure, I guess so. The second one is weird, risks to banks. I'm like, uh, I thought you were not so great on banks. Now you wanna protect them. I suppose so, it is a legacy system. But uh, to me, I think the risks to banks is not getting into cryptocurrency and just sitting on the sidelines. Look, NYDIG just came out and they're gonna have, I think it's like 2.8 or 1.8 million customers on, on, on these different small and medium-sized banks. They're gonna be able to custody, hold, transact and everything else with crypto and it's gonna happen soon. To me, it's like, it's like streaming service. Actually, to me, it's almost like, it's like commerce. You know, JCPenney and Woolworths and all those different places that people in this channel probably don't even know about. Uh, they could have gone to the e-commerce way and they could have made a killing, but they said, no, no, no. We think people are going to come to our stores and malls are going to still rip. <laughs> and look what happened. So it's, it's the same thing. Look which way the winds are blowing and move that way. Uh, she also states unique threats posed by stable coins. I have no idea what she's talking about. Using cyber attacks that can disrupt the financial system. And this one, yes, there's a lot of ransomware and things like that. But before that, what'd they use? They still use cash. So I don't think it's any any different uh, other than the fact that you can track it a little bit easier. I know there's other types of things they can do. They can put it into mixtures and make it a little bit harder, but you can track it. And the last ransomware, those those hackers were so idiotic, they, they rented a cloud storage server, and that's how the FBI got them. Ugh, dumb. And then lastly, risks from decentralized finance, which... I'm guessing rug pulls and things like that. So that's just one side of the story, okay? And you have to remember, just because, and you're only gonna hear this one side. You're not gonna hear this next part here. And this is the thing that you need to focus on. Just because there's a committee and one person is covered a lot in the news doesn't mean that's how they all think. Here we go. Republicans on the Senate Bank Committee, including ranking member Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania and Cynthia Loomis of Wyoming, argue that Congress should better understand the potential uses of crypto while keep, keeping illicit activity in check. Saying sounds good. Toomey and Loomis are exploring the value and possible apps, applications of so-called stable coins or digital currencies pegged to national currencies like the US dollar. And they state, it's important to note that people have raised legitimate issues about crypto. That's what Toomey said, but we shouldn't lose sight of the tremendous potential benefits that distributed ledger technology offers. And that is a great point. So here's the thing, you just have to remember that you're gonna hear a lot more negative stories. They're gonna focus on the negativity, but just look at the prize about where you think things are going and just go from there. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that part. Let's go on to foot number three, Amazon. What happened? In a nutshell, they denied the story. <laughs> That's, this is really what it comes down to. I'm not gonna read any part of the story. Here's what it was. There was a story from City AM 
Uh, one of the reporters came out and said that he had a source. Source said that Amazon is going to start accepting Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Cardano, Ethereum, and they're going to use that for transactions. Amazon the next day came out and said, that's totally not true, and that's it. And that's pretty much where people just stopped on the story, like, oh, it's not true. And then, of course, you see the, the market dip. But just remember this. As much as they said it, which, okay, maybe they might not going to do it, but just remember that in Amazon Jobs, Amazon.jobs forward slash en forward slash jobs, I'll link in the description. Uh, they're looking for a digital currency, not a distributed ledger, a digital currency and blockchain product lead. Do you want to innovate on behalf of customers within the payments and financial systems of one of the largest e-commerce companies in the world? Here's the thing. If you have to deal with online sales, you will know it's like a Stripe, a PayPal, whatever else you, else you want to use. And those fees are pretty hefty. It's 2.99% plus 30 cents transaction fees. And that's just for little guy me. So extrapolate that to millions of entrepreneurs and a huge company like Amazon. Do you know how much they're paying in transaction fees? It's probably enormous, <laughs> enormous. So if you have something like this come in, like, you know what? We want to save a little money. That's what their job is, is to reduce the, the overhead. And they could do something like with digital currencies that are fast, cheap, easy to use. Why wouldn't they do it? So it's just something to ponder. And just remember, uh, again, don't lose sight of the big story, which is Amazon still looking for someone to do integration with cryptocurrencies. All right. Let me just think about that. I think it's a pretty good one. And lastly, FUD number four, let's talk about China. Before we go on, China bans crypto all the time. I think we all know this, right? And the recent one was they banned miners. So first of all, sorry, Chinese people, that your government doesn't want crypto. I can't help you there. Uh, and we'll just say that crypto, for all intents and purposes, is going to miss out on 1.3 billion people or how, maybe it's 1.6 billion. I can't, I can't remember. Chinese population. But it's okay. We've got billions more people around the globe who want to transact in crypto and digital assets. And this was from Bobby Lee. And just so you know, and nothing against Bobby Lee, but he says, China's crackdown signals an oncoming crypto ban. And I, I must be honest with you, he's right here. Uh, he states here, China wants to regulate crypto to achieve its overarching go goal of globalization of digital renminbi, or the digital yuan, whichever you want to call it. He states, I do fear that in four to five years, the country might outright ban it, crypto. So before I move on, uh, what it is, is you can still hold crypto apparently in China, but you can't transact, you can't trade, you can't really do squat with it. So in all intents and purposes, in my mind, it's banned anyhow. It's not like, you know, you're walking up to your friend and like, here's, here's a little Bitcoin. That's, that's not how it's working. And if you're not trading, if you're not moving, you're not transacting, you're not moving wealth uh, out of the country with it. I don't see it. And, and you can't do that anymore. So in all intents and purposes, they're going to probably ban that too. But I don't see the point because it's already null and void. I don't, I don't get it. And then to finish up, the government's recent ban on crypto mining and related trading seems to be aimed at deterring citizens from getting heavily involved. All right. So that's essentially another FUD story. And again, don't forget, China bans it all the time. So don't be surprised. And that's all. And again, the reason why I bring this up is to not to be like, oh, no, poor pitiful crypto market. It's just to, to dig deep and let you see the different side of the story. You're always going to, in, in the news, it's always going to be the negative part. That's what they're going to show you. So it's my job to show you the other part. And so you can make the best decision for you and your family. Again, on this channel, not investment advice, just investment opinion. And that's the four FUD stories. And lastly, I just want to uh, tell everybody, finally, the Theta Drop is here. And I have to tell you, this artist, Ivory Symbiotic Creatives, they are the one, he, she, they are the ones that created the uh, this NFT, which I got to tell you, looks uh, pretty darn good. And uh, they created it in a very short amount of time. They also did uh, the, the cool trailer that I played a little bit ago. Uh, I'll link that uh, in the description as well. But just so you know, if you're looking to get this NFT or any of the other ones, uh, just go to, and I'll put the uh, the website there. God, look at that smile. Brr. Couldn't have done better. All right. But uh, the auction is this. So here's the NFT, YouTube brand shout out. Uh, redeem this NFT and Rob, me, will give your brand a 15 second shout out in his next YouTube videos. 
and that's twice. Uh, and then also uh, for this this one, this NFT, it's a live Zoom session on YouTube with me. Uh, you can join Rob and three others on a 60 minute, 60 minutes a long time. We'll probably, when we do this, there might be beer involved, not for sure. 60 minute Zoom call Q&A, and that's on September 29th. Also, uh, the next to last one, private crypto portfolio consultation. Uh, I will evaluate your your portfolio. Uh, it's for a 30 minute Zoom console. So yeah, not too bad. And then there's a t-shirt here if you like t-shirts. Well, I like t-shirts. And uh, the last one is the chosen one collectible, which is that, that uh, sweet NFT that you have right there. And just so you know, this one's only available for 24 hours. After that, it's, it's, you can only get on the secondary market. I like this one, this one's pretty cool. So again, uh, that is uh, Ivory Symbiotic Creators. I always get that, that name wrong. Uh, fantastic artist. Thanks so much, I appreciate it. And that individual's information will also be in the description uh, right next to where you can get uh, the NFT and take a look at that. So that's it. So look, uh, if you made all the way to the end, hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. I think we talk about here are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much. Uh, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.